a swollen throbbing tooth isn't just painful it could be a serious infection and the tooth abscess can spread beyond your teeth reaching your jawbone your bloodstream and can travel to vital organs if it's left untreated now many people ignore it before it's too late and in this video i'll show you exactly what causes a tooth abscess the warning signs you shouldn't ignore and the only treatments that actually work so what is a tooth abscess now a tooth abscess is basically a bacterial infection that forms a pocket of pus around your teeth. And it happens when bacteria enters due to an untreated cavity, gum infection, or trauma. And once the bacteria spreads, the pressure builds up and that can cause a severe pain and swelling. And there are different types of abscesses, but today we'll focus on the two common ones. So the first one is known as a periapical abscess. So that's when an infection starts from within the tooth. So usually from deep decay on untreated cavity. So that starts from the tooth itself. And the second one is a periodontal abscess. So that's when an infection starts from within the gum and that can spread to the surrounding tooth root. There are other types of abscesses, but they're far less common. Regardless of the type, all abscesses require radiated attention. So how do you know if you have a tooth abscess? Here are the most common signs to look out for. So severe throbbing pain that can especially get worse at night, swelling within the gums, the jaw, the face, a pus or bad taste in the mouth, fever or feeling unwell, and also facial swelling, which can indicate that the infection is spreading. And the most common mistake people make is ignoring the pain when it temporarily goes away. So if an abscess bursts, that pressure can decrease, which can make the pain temporarily go away, but the infection is still present. The infection is still there and it can spread. And if the swelling moves to your jaw or to your neck, that can lead to something known as cellulitis. And that's a severe infection that requires emergency treatment. In worst cases, an untreated abscess can lead to sepsis. And that happens when bacteria enters the bloodstream and then that can travel to vital organs, triggering a full body inflammatory response. And the early signs include fever, confusion, rapid heart rate. And if sepsis is left untreated, that can cause organ failure or even death. So that's why catching the problem early is crucial. So how do we treat an abscess? Now, there are some misconceptions out there. The first way is through a root canal treatment. That's only if the tooth is savable. So a root canal is basically a procedure that removes the infection from within the tooth while keeping the tooth itself. So you get to save the tooth. So the first thing we do is drill a small hole within the tooth to access the infected area. And then after that, what we do is we remove the infected pulp. So the pulp is basically the center of the tooth that includes the blood vessels and the nerve supply. But at that point, the tooth is dead. And then we clean the inside of the tooth and disinfect it to kill off the bacteria. And then the space inside is filled with a special material to prevent reinfection. And then after that, after the filling is done, we'd usually place a crown, especially if it's a back tooth, to increase the fracture resistance of the tooth, because at that point, the tooth is usually brittle. But that's usually if we catch it early and we can save the tooth and eliminate the infection completely. So the tooth has to be savable. So root canals aren't as painful as people think. So modern techniques actually make this procedure smooth and effective. The second way of treating an abscess, especially if the tooth is not savable and the infection is severe, is a tooth extraction. So that means we'd remove the tooth or pull the tooth. And that's when the tooth is too damaged and the only option is to save the whole area is by removing the tooth because an untreated abscess sometimes can spread to the jaw and to the neighboring teeth. So the only way to eliminate that source of bacteria, that source of infection is to remove the tooth completely. And after an extraction, depending on where the tooth is in the mouth, you might need a replacement option such as an implant or bridge. Many people think you can cure an abscess alone with just antibiotics and that's wrong. That's another myth and misconception. So think of it as trying to clean a moldy wall with some air freshener spray. And what that does is that can mask the problem temporarily, but that doesn't get to the actual source or to the actual issue. Antibiotics help control the infection temporarily by reducing the bacterial growth around the area, but they do not remove the source of the infection, which is the dead tissue inside the nerve or the tooth or the gum. And without proper treatment, the abscess will likely come back. To be clear, antibiotics do not remove the source of infection, which is the dead tissue inside the tooth or the gum. And if you do not get a root canal or an extraction, the abscess will likely come back. So we usually prescribe antibiotics if there are signs of significant swelling or if there is signs of a spreading infection or if somebody is immunocompromised. So while antibiotics help in the short term, they are not a cure you still need proper treatment. And what about home remedies? Now, I get it, you might be in pain and you need relief fast, but home remedies are not a cure to the abscess. Here's what helps temporarily. So over-the-counter painkillers, things like ibuprofen, paracetamol, they help reduce the pain, but they won't fix the infection. Applying a cold compress to reduce the swelling, that can help numb up the area, but that won't remove the bacteria. And also rinsing with salt water to help keep the area clean to slow down the bacterial growth 
but again, that won't stop the infection. And none of these things fix the problem. They will only buy you time until you see a dentist. So how do we prevent an abscess so it doesn't happen again? So we need to prevent infections before they start. And here's a simple three-step daily routine I suggest you do. So the first thing is brushing with a fluoride toothpaste twice a day for two minutes. The second thing is using a floss. Make sure you use that every day so you can clean in between your teeth. These are areas that your toothbrush can't reach. And also using an antibacterial mouthwash. Make sure it's alcohol-free. So that can help kill any harmful bacteria and protect your mouth. But most abscesses happen because people ignore small problems before they turn into big ones. So make sure you get treatment early and here's how. Brush and floss every day, treat cavities even when they're still early, and also see a dentist for regular checkups. So when a tooth is badly damaged, infected or painful, you're usually faced with a big decision. Do you try to save it with a root canal or is it better to remove it with an extraction? And both options have pros and cons and the right choice isn't always obvious. And in fact, it depends on quite a few factors. So your tooth's condition, your overall health, your priorities, and sometimes even your long-term financial goals. And the good news is, once you understand how we as dentists think through this decision, it becomes a lot clearer. And that's what we're going to talk about today, because sometimes saving a tooth makes perfect sense, and other times choosing an extraction is the smarter move long-term. And by the end of this video, you'll understand when root canals are actually the better choice, when extractions might actually save you time, money, and future problems, what long-term factors you should be thinking about, like bone health, implant options, and healing, and other specific questions you should ask your dentist or you can ask your dentist to make sure you're making the right decision. And this isn't going to be about some scare tactics, and it's not about pushing you towards one treatment or the other, but it's about helping you feel confident and informed so you can make the best choice for your health and your future. So let's start with when saving a tooth with a root canal is usually the better option. So a root canal is basically designed to do one thing, and that's to remove the infected or the damaged tissue inside the tooth, clean the space, and preserve the outer structure. So in other words, the goal is to keep your natural tooth, all while removing the part that's causing the problem. So, and you'll usually want to save your tooth with a root canal when the outer structure of the tooth is still strong enough to support a crown or a filling, or when there's enough healthy bone around the tooth for it to stay stable, or when the crack or the decay hasn't extended below the gum line where it can't be restored, and when you want to maintain your natural chewing function without needing implants, bridges, or dentures. So think of it like fixing the engine of a car while the body and the frame are still solid. But when the foundation is strong and when it's treated properly, root canals can last for decades, allowing you to keep chewing, smiling, and even living without thinking about it. And now there are other situations where you can't really save a tooth and when that isn't really the best idea, so let's talk about when an extraction can actually be a better, smarter move. Now, even though saving a natural tooth is usually the first choice, there are situations when removing the tooth is actually the smarter, healthier decision. And extraction is often the better option when the tooth is cracked below the gum line or when we have a vertical root fracture or when there isn't enough healthy tooth structure to support a filling or a crown or when the bone around the tooth has been severely damaged by an infection or gum disease or when the tooth has already had multiple failed treatments, or if saving the tooth would require complex and expensive surgeries with no guaranteed success. And it's a little like trying to patch a sinking ship. So if the foundation isn't stable, sometimes it's just better to move on and build something new from the beginning. So choosing an extraction isn't a failure. In many cases, it's a proactive, smart decision to protect your health, your comfort, and your future. And the goal here is always the same. It's to give you a stable, pain-free, healthy mouth. And sometimes that means starting fresh with options like implants and bridges or other restorations. And of course, before making a decision, it's important to understand a few key other things. Things like costs, healing time, and long-term outcomes and prognosis. So let's walk through those next. Now that we've talked about when each option might make sense, let's go a little deeper into some of the key differences between a root canal and an extraction, especially when it comes to cost, healing time, and what happens in the long run. So upfront, a root canal, especially with a crown, can seem much more expensive than a simple extraction. But it's important to think about long-term costs and not just the immediate bill. Keeping your natural tooth, which usually avoids needing more extensive replacements later. But with an extraction, you might need additional treatments. So things like a dental implant, a bridge, or even a denture to replace the missing tooth. And 
all those replacement options, especially implants, can end up costing more than the initial root canal and crown would have cost in the first place. Now healing after root canal is usually faster and easier compared to healing after an extraction, especially if the extraction was complicated. And after root canal, you might have mild tenderness for a few days, but most people go back to normal activities very quickly. And with an extraction, especially if the extraction was deeply infected, complicated, or if there was bone damage, healing can take longer. And sometimes you may need a bone graft, especially if you're planning for an implant later, which adds more time. Now, if a tooth is restorable and the root canal is done properly and you've taken good care of it, it can last for decades, sometimes even a lifetime. But if the tooth is too damaged, trying to save it at all costs can lead to repeated treatments and frustration. Meanwhile, extractions, if followed by a well-placed implant, can also provide a strong, long-lasting solution. And the key here is making a decision before the damage becomes too severe because once too much bone is lost, replacing the tooth becomes much more complicated. So in short, root canals usually involve less healing time and protect your natural tooth. Extractions can seem cheaper up front, but may lead to bigger costs later on if you decide to replace the tooth. And the best long-term option depends on how much healthy tooth you have left and how much bone you still have. Now, if you're still unsure about which option is right for you, don't worry, because we're gonna go through specific questions you can ask your dentist to make a clear, confident decision. Now, at this point, you already know the bigger picture, the pros and cons of saving a tooth versus removing it. But when you're sitting in the dental chair, it's not always easy to know and when to ask these questions because sometimes you might be nervous and the right questions can actually make all the difference. So here are a few questions to ask your dentist before deciding. So is the tooth restorable in the long term or would saving it be a short term fix? So you want to know if the root canal is a real solution or if the tooth might still have a high risk of failure even after treatment. Or you can also ask how much healthy tooth structure is left because if most of the tooth is still strong, a root canal and a crown may work beautifully. But if the remaining tooth is thin, fragile or cracked, sometimes it's better to think about other options. And another question you can ask is what's the condition of the bone around the tooth? Because a tooth needs a strong foundation to stay healthy. And if there's severe bone loss, gum disease. And one final question you can also ask is what are my long-term costs and risks for each option? So you're not just looking at today's cost. You're looking at what it's going to cost you in the next 5, 10 or 20 years. So a slightly higher investment now can save you time, money and headaches later. Now these questions aren't about finding the cheapest and fastest solution. It's about finding the right long-term solution for you based on your goals, your health and your comfort. Now when it comes to root canals versus extractions, there's no one size fits all answer. If the tooth is still strong and restorable, saving it with a root canal often gives you the best long-term result. But if the damage is too severe, or if the foundation around the tooth isn't stable anymore, removing it and planning for replacement might be the healthier choice. And the smartest thing you can do here is ask the right questions. Weigh your options carefully and make a decision that's right for your health, your comfort, and your future. Now, if you found this video helpful and want more clear, simple explanations about dental treatments, especially if you're wondering about root canals and want to know what happens step by step or how to know if you really need one or signs that you might need a root canal, make sure you check out these videos in the description down below. And thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.